and welcome back to the series where I rebuilt a now it's really broken Lamborghini Gallardo transmission. So let's uh, look at the next step. We're going to start assembling everything again. And the first step is to start assembling the synchro keys for the locking collars. And here's what the synchro keys look like. They are made of springs, a ball bearing, and a little hat to interface with the locking collar. Now, the best way to install these is to actually use some sort of assembly grease, like a transmission assembly lube or Vaseline, if you have it. And what this does is that it makes these parts sticky. And in case of when you're assembling these, and if the spring were to pop back up, it's not going to wreck havoc and and push all of the other parts across the garage floor. So I'll show you how you would do it and how you would actually install these synchro keys in the locking collar. And here's what a assembled synchro key looks like with uh, my transmission loop. You can see here the ball bearing rests inside the hat along with the spring. So this loop will again prevent parts from flying everywhere and it will stick to the signal hub as well as the locking collar in this gap right here. And I'll show you how you would set everything up accordingly. So all these keys need to be installed together at the very same time because of the spring pressure here. What you need to do is set everything up like this and then with a screwdriver, with your thumbs, with your hands, start pushing these springs towards the lip here of the synchro hub once you have all these springs riding on this lip here you can then start pushing the locking collar towards the center of the synchro hub and then everything should be able to lock in place and here's what it looks like with all the three synchro keys installed and locked in and everything should be seated properly in the recess of the synchro hub here I'm going to go ahead and install the rest of the signal keys. And then after that, we're going to go and start assembling uh, both of our input shafts as well as the output shaft. So let's get started with the output shaft. There is only one locking collar to install. And the first step is to install this needle bearing here. Make sure to loop this up with some transmission fluid. Once you have that, you can then start installing the second gear. All right, so now you're ready to install the locking collar along with the synchro hub, and this will need to get pressed in onto these splines. Now, to make it easier for you to do this, you can heat up the locking collar along with the synchro hub to around 212 degrees Fahrenheit. There's a couple ways. One is to use an induction heater. Another way is to boil the machine part in gear oil. Or you can also bake the parts. And this is what I'm going to do. It's very easy. It's very simple. So I'm just going to bake this for around 15 to 20 minutes. And then I'll be able to go ahead and press all these parts onto the output shaft. All right, make sure the chamfered end here faces second gear. That was very easy. I actually didn't need to use the press. All right, next up is the uh, circuit clip or the locking ring. And this has already been heated up as well, so it should slide on pretty easily. Roller bearing, make sure to loop this up with transmission fluid. And then the synchros for first gear. So the last two pieces is this thrust washer. Make sure that this chamfer end faces up here, AKA facing this inner race here. And then finally, we need to install this inner race. And this is an interference fit. So yeah, we need to go ahead and start pressing this race down with the press. So 
So let's start installing the gears for the input shaft now. So the first step is to install fifth gear here along with their synchros. Make sure that again, you lubricate these needle bearings with transmission fluid. Next up is the synchronizer hub and the locking ring for 5th and 6th gear. Make sure that this ridge here, this side faces the 5th gear wheel. And of course this has been heated up to 212 degrees Fahrenheit already. So this synchro hub is a little tight even after I've heated it up. So what I need to do is obviously I need to press this down with a big long pipe like this. When you're pressing down, make sure that this tab here on the synchro blocker ring matches against the indentations of the synchro keys in the synchro here. Now, alternatively, if you don't have a press, you can actually flip this input shelf around and actually just use your long jaws and pull it towards the first gear and second gear. So next we're gonna install this lock ring as well as this thrust ring right here. And then finally, six gear here. Once both sets of gears are installed, make sure to test the locking mechanism and make sure that everything has enough axial play, that nothing's binding. So I'm gonna test six gear now. Okay, everything's locking, it looks good. Now I'm gonna go and test fifth gear. And push it down. This has enough play, that's good. This has play, that's great, this is locked. Next we're gonna install these uh, thrust washers here. This one goes into a little indent here and it's a little bit of a tight fit but as long as you get uh, some sort of a hammer here and I would recommend you get a copper hammer. Okay so next set of gears is third and fourth gear. This is third gear and like always lubricate the needle bearings with transmission fluid. install third gear. All right, the locker ring as well as the synchronizer hub. Make sure that, let's see here, this end right here faces third gear. Okay, we're in the home stretch right now. We have one more locking ring to install and then we'll be able to install and put on fourth gear. And finally fourth gear. So let's start testing. Let's shift into fourth gear. And then shift this into third gear. And then finally, this thrust washer here. So, should forks have been reinstalled, I've mounted it back onto my device here, and I'm ready to actually put on the sandwich plate or bearing housing. And to do that, it's gonna be a press fit on to these two surfaces right here. So in order to make this go way more smoothly, I actually baked the entire sandwich plate in the oven at 210 degrees Fahrenheit. So 
hopefully the plate will be able to easily fit onto these two surfaces right here. And if I needed a little nudge, hopefully I could just hammer it with a rubber mallet. Okay, so it's almost completely on. Final push is to just get the screws here as well as the gears on here and just tighten everything up. And here we have it. Here is the final result of all of the transfer gears as well as the corresponding nuts um, installed. So what you end up doing is that you tighten the lower nut here, this nut as well as this nut, as much as you can until you can't move these nuts anymore. And that's when you know that you've reached uh, the terminal point for the bearings here, this bearing here and this bearing here. And then what you need to do is what I recommend, you actually back out this nut here as well as back this out and then if you want to get a new nut here that's a good chance to get it install the new nut install this nut again with thread locker and then tighten it to your specifications from there you then tighten this second spanner nut to the same torque as well so the next step is to quite really put this whole piece back into the differential housing here. And the big step here, here is to prep this surface here, as well as to prep the bearing surface here. Make sure that there is zero of the old gasket. Finally, you have this big transfer gear over here. Install it this way, right here. And then you go and get your shop crane and flip this around and then start to install it this way. So let's assume now that I flipped everything and this is actually the same transfer gear that was here, but just flipped around. What you need to do is heat this inner uh, race up here, heat it up, and then you'll be able to go in and put it this, this way here. And then once you have that, then you'll be able to then install the pinion gear. And here's the pinion gear right here. So you, you go and install the pinion gear and then knock this up because this, this is the inverted. So you knock this up here and then you're gonna knock the pinion gear into this inner race here. And then this will then be a to allow you to install the two spanner wrenches here that will lock this uh, gear in here. Well, that's it. That's more or less how you would rebuild this uh, transmission here. I'm not gonna go and show you how to actually stack and put the gear housings in. It's pretty trivial. So from here on, I'm gonna actually go in and take everything else apart and store everything and catalog everything because there are some parts that I think are still pretty good, uh, especially the forks here and some of the synchros here that could still work such as synchro for the third gear, first gear, second gear, as well as fifth and sixth gear. Well, that's it for the entire series of this rebuild. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you liked this content. Hope you learned some things. I definitely learned a lot working on this transmission. Now have a lot more confidence when and if I actually, let's see here, when and if I actually need to change the synchros on this car as well. And as always, if you like this content, please like and subscribe. I really appreciate the support.